The first thing we're going to do is define our animated value. So we'll say state equals animation animated value that defaults to zero. This will control the animation for the color as well as the progress of the width across the screen. Rather than diving into animating this value from zero to one using a timing, let's first set up the progress bar and the interpolation so that we can see the effect when it happens. So let's come down to our render and set up our progress inside of our button. We have our button here and our text here. And so in our breakdown, we can see that the progress needs to happen before the button text. Otherwise, if we put it after the button text, as the background animated, our button text would get covered up. So we're going to say view style equals style sheet dot absolute fill. This is a helper function for us that does position absolute left, top, right, and bottom of zero. It's just going to define a view that covers this entire thing so that when we use our width percentages that it doesn't overflow outside of here. And now with that set up, we can set up our animated.view and give it a style with styles.progress, which we will go set up now. This will be our progress bar. So we want it to be absolutely positioned. And then we want it to be left and top zero. This will then allow us to control whether or not we want an animation to go left and right from top to bottom or just cover the bottom of the screen. And we'll change those animations later. So we'll say top zero and left zero. With that set up, we're able to now go put uh, build our progress style. So our progress style will consist of a interpolate on the percentage. So we'll say this dot state dot animation dot interpolate the input range zero to one. Our output range will be zero, zero percent to one hundred percent. And then we will do an extrapolate clamp here. In case zero uh, the animation goes beyond zero or one, we don't want this going to be a negative percentage or a percentage over one hundred. We'll then set up our background color interpolate. So we say const color interpolate is equal to this dot state dot animation dot interpolate. Our input range is going to be zero to one again. And then our output range is going to be two RGB colors. These colors can be whatever you want as long as they are RGB, RGBA or HCL so that uh, interpolation will work on them. Now with these two values set up, we can set up our progress task. So we say const progress style, and we'll give our width with our progress interpolate, which will be between 0% and 100%. We'll then have a bottom of zero for this particular animation. So now we have our left and top applied with the styles.progress, and now we'll just apply a bottom here so that as our percentage, our animation will go across this button. And then we'll pass in background color with our color interpolate. Pass this into our progress bar. And now we can get started on what happens when we actually press our button. In real life, this is going to be controlled by some sort of async progress operation that you have going. So when the user presses on this button again, we're just going to reset everything and restart our animation. This kind of is up to you on implementation. So what we're going to do is say this.state dot animation dot set value of zero and then we'll trigger our animation our animated timing so say animated dot timing pass in this dot state dot animation to value of one I'll just give it a duration of, of 1500 milliseconds and then we'll call start if this were a real implementation you might do an animated timing um, and set the value to whatever the percentage is. So it would be like 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. And you'd continually trigger this animated dot timing over a smaller amount, but we're just going to animate it to one. So now when we refresh this and we click on our button, you can see that our animation is taking effect, but nothing happens when the button is completed. We don't have our opacity yet. So to do our opacity, we'll first set up another animated value. Do animated value with a default of one because we want the bar to be visible when we first 
operate across the screen and then once completed fade out. So then we'll come down here to our progress style and apply our opacity. So this dot state dot opacity. And then inside of our timing, we'll need to specify a callback, which its first argument is an object with finished true or false. If we have finished and we weren't interrupted by another press, we'll say animated.timing, say this.state.opacity, and our value will go from 1 to 0, so it'll fade out over a duration of 200 milliseconds, and we'll call start on this. Now, to also reset this value back to 1, we're going to need to do this.state.animation, or this.state.opacity, that set value to its default of 1. Now we can go ahead and refresh this. And when we press on our button, we'll see our animation go across the screen and then fade out. And then anytime it stays in that particular setting. And then anytime we want to press on this again, our values will reset right before we start doing our timing and our opacity again. So we can click on it and see that it resets. So we don't want to do an animated timing on this zero back to here unless you want to watch this drain, but that's not what we're setting up. Now, because we're working with a with uh, a percentage, that doesn't necessarily apply to just width. It could apply to height. So depending on the animation that you want, we can pass these in and modify our style slightly to get some different animations. So rather than setting a bottom of zero, if we change this to right, and rather than width for the progress, we change it to height, What's that, what that's going to set up is a left and top of zero, and then all the way over here. So basically, the animation will start up here and then animate to the full height. So if we refresh this and we press on it again, we can see that it animates in a curtain style. And then finally, because we've passed this progress style in, as the second parameter, we can override styles in the styles.progress. So if we wanted this to be a small bar on the bottom of our button, we'll change this back to width, of pro width for the progress. Then we'll switch over to top null because we don't want it to be on top anymore. We want it to be on the bottom. And that will move our bar to the left bottom and then animate all the way to the right side. Now we do need to add a height, and this height will just be five. It could be any value, um, but that'll be a, a five pixel bar on the bottom here. So if you refresh and trigger our animation, we see that we now have a bar that just animates along the bottom. And finally, if we didn't want any particular color, we can remove this and remove our top null and keep our progress interpolate. And rather than our color interpolate, we can just pass in a background color. That's RGBA 255, 255, 255, so white with a 0.5 opacity. And this will allow a kind of whitish background to go across the screen. So this will just ignore color interpolate because we're passing in a background color. And we refresh this and trigger our button. And now we just see a whiteish background go across the screen or across the button.